Okay, so this question is all about how well you know the definition of a confidence interval. So what they've done is they've given us one particular confidence interval generated from one particular data set at the 99% level. So given this, uh, we want to evaluate whether these statements are true. Start with the first statement, with 99% confidence, wives are estimated on average to spend one to six hours each week um, on household uh, chores, I guess, compared to their husbands. So the key here is that the statement refers to 99% to confidence, not 99% probability or 99% of anything else. So this statement is true because this is exactly how a confidence interval can be defined, right? We choose the confidence level, and thus we can say with 99% confidence, at a 99% confidence level, um, this one to six hours is a good estimate. Um, the second statement says, for the sample of 18 married couples, the mean difference in time spent on chores was 3.5 hours. Notice that they're talking about this particular sample of 18 married couples, not any statement about the true parameter. So for this, for that particular sample, this statement is correct because, uh, because the, uh, the 3.5 hours is halfway between 1 and 6, right? So this is a confidence interval. This is 3.5. <coughs> Third statement says, if this study were repeated many times, we would expect 99% of the resulting intervals to contain the true population mean difference. So when they start talking about the true population mean difference, you should start watching out to make sure everything lines up with our definition, right? So first of all, we have that the study was repeated many times, um, and that 99% of the resulting intervals, right? 99% of the intervals you get from repeating the study many times, right? So it's not a set interval, it's a changing interval that changes with your sample. Um, but we expect 99% of those intervals to contain the true population. Mean. So everything lines up, this is true. So the next one, 99% of the time would expect, this, again, the study is repeated many times, but they're saying 99% of the time would expect the true population mean difference to fall in this particular interval, not the changing resulting interval from, from the last part, right? So this is not true because for a particular interval from this data set, we don't expect any kind of 99% probability of anything happening, right, with the true population mean. Um, we only expect that if we change the interval every time we, we base the interval every time on our sample. That's a random sample, so it's changing, right? Okay, so the next one, the 99%, uh, this confidence interval requires a distribution of time spent on household chores by wives to be normally distributed. This is, this, this is false because there's nothing that says that, you know, they even use the normal distribution to 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 model this confidence interval, right? So um, it could be any distribution, uh, and we could have gotten a 99% confidence interval. Um, for example, like, uh, right, she could have used the binomial distribution to do this, um, or any other distribution, whatever she chooses, right? At a 1%, so the next one, at a 1% sickness level, there's sufficient evidence to save married women who live with their uh, with their husbands spend more time on average than their husbands for the population of all couples represented by the same. So notice that we're staying at a 1% significance level. Again, this is not a probability statement. This is a statement about, um, about how much evidence we have uh, for the mean being above zero. Right? Because if this difference, if this difference is above zero, then married women spend more time than their husbands.
right? Because the difference is woman's time minus um, husband time, right? So this is true because this whole confidence interval is above zero. So, and it's a 99% confidence interval, right? It's a 99% confidence interval. So, uh, so this statement is true. And finally, a 90% confidence interval made with the same data would be narrower. Um, this is, again, true. And the reason this is true is because you should think of this, you can think of this two ways, either pictorially or, uh, or intuitively, right? So here's the picture. Let's say this is a normal situation, right? Again, uh, we, we know it doesn't have to be normal, but just for illustration purposes, um, right now we're covering 99% of the area under the curve, right? Um, so this this area is 1%. If we uh, were, you know, this area, right? So the total area is 1%. That's outside of our coverage interval. Now if we want a 90%, clearly we can afford to shade in a little bit more area on both sides, right? So this interval shrinks, and now this uh, this total area is um, is ten percent, right? So we increase this area, uh, the area outside our interval. We decrease the uh, the distance away from the center um, that we need to be, um, and intuitively this makes sense because. Uh, you know, if I told you you have to be 90%, 99% confident about your answer, you know, you'd give me a wider range because, you know, I'm requiring you to be more confident um, versus if you, if I say you don't have to be confident at all about your answer, right, you can just tell me any small range and, uh, and, and meet my requirement. Um, okay. And... And the last part of this question, it has been suggested by another sociologist that the age of the individuals in the study might impact how many hours um, husbands and wives spend performing household chores. So in this case, age would be an example of a confounding variable. And that's because... That's because it's, uh, it's a variable that you don't really care about. right? So the study only cares about whether wives spend more time than, uh, than, than, than husbands, right? So that's the research question they're talking about. They're not worried about if age also affects how much time people spend on household chores. Um, so it's a conf confounding variable that all it does is, uh, is throw doubt and, uh, on, onto the results of the survey. Um, and it's something that you must account for, but um, is something that you're not interested in researching.